boxing coming up in the forthcoming games, which begin in Auckland towards the end of uh, next month. Uh, as we show you last night's amateur boxing international between England and Ireland at Coventry. Reporting this time, Harry Carpenter once again and Jim Neely. Despite the competitive nature and the importance of this fixture, especially for those involved in Auckland, both teams arrived at the venue on the same bus. The English team didn't look quite the same without eight times ABA champion and team captain John Lyon, who's got hand problems at the moment. And Northern Ireland's flyweight hope for Auckland, Wayne McCulloch, the Irish flag bearer in Seoul, was also missing due to injury. So at flyweight for Ireland, it was PJ O'Halloran against England's Rowan Williams. O'Halloran comes up for the second with a cut on his lower lip. knows exactly what he has to do, this little Irishman, he's got to come forward, he's got to get close, and he's got to pick up a few points. And he's still walking on to these right and left counters. And Williams making a very good England debut indeed. Now, can he keep it going for three rounds? He couldn't in his England quarter-final last season against Armour. Can he do it tonight? so much taller than the Irish light flyway champion that he looks as though he's in a different weight category altogether. Alan beginning to get through. This is O'Halloran's third appearance in this England Island match. Previously at light flyweight, both against Mark Epton, the former ABA champion, now, now pro. And both times O'Halloran was stopped. So he's hoping to do a good deal better tonight. And some of uh, William's work now beginning to look a little more ragged. I think he's beginning to fill the pace. And the work is not as compact as it was in the first round. So although he's made a good start, it could be that the little Irishman might well come back into this and get on top. <laughs> William's doing a bit of holding. Oh, he didn't get the caution. Forcing his way inside by sheer strength and determination. Always trying to cut Williams off. Oh, that's a good left hand from Williams. And he brought that one out of the blue. At the very moment he needed it most. Two very fast rounds indeed, as you would expect from flyweights. This is 25-year-old Private O'Halloran of the Army and some Munchins in Limerick, who was really coming right back into that contest and then suddenly took uh, a pretty useful left hand, which was thrown from way back. We'll see it here. He was backing off Williams, and then over it came. Look at that. He saw the chance, and he whacked it in from a long way back, and it was effective. One round to go. It's up to you. Nice. Nice and sharp. Double hand jab. Whack that left hand. Throw the left hand on its own. You can't miss him with it. He'll run right into it. Oh, come on, let's pull them shoulders together. Keep that guard nice and tight. Move them feet. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Well, we should be in for a tremendous last three minutes here between these two. At flyweight for Ireland on the right. 
the diminutive figure of private PJ O'Halloran and the taller southpaw from England in his first international, Rowan Williams. And Williams still has a shade advantage on my card. And Williams now just needs to keep his boxing together. Hopefully keep his footwork going and ply that southpaw lead and stop this little Irishman coming at him if he's going to win in his uh, international debut which will be a great triumph for him Williams unemployed lives in Erdington suburb of Birmingham last month here in Coventry he stopped an Irish international called Chris Noter Antonio from the New Hill Club and stopped him in two rounds that was a good performance and now he's doing a good job on O'Halloran as well. And these counter punches thrown from a long way back, using his reach, are very, very effective indeed. And a good solid left again. O'Halloran complaining for some reason, not sure why. Being picked off at long range and can't do a thing about it. Well, he's made the move up from light flyweight to fly O'Halloran, but he really doesn't look in the same weight class as uh, Williams. And he's always going to have a problem giving reach away. And he's walking on to punch after punch. This has been an overwhelmingly good final round for Williams. Again, measured him with the left, took his time and measured him with it. now picking off O'Halloran as he likes and O'Halloran is getting very very tired indeed well it's a great comeback he was uh, making heavy weather of it in the second round Williams and then he slung that good left hand and he's been on top ever since That's a cracking contest, and uh, Williams seems to me clearly to have won it. And if he has, that is a splendid England debut. They look pleased enough. Well, that was the Irish corner, of course. <laughs> but I'm sure Ian Irwin, the England coach, will be pleased enough with that performance from uh, Williams. What a good start for England. And suddenly, England have a good substitute now for John Lyon, the man who will be going to the Commonwealth Games. And a brave little opponent, P.J. O'Halloran, who looked as though he might get on top in the second round. But then, when he took that good left, everything changed. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by a majority decision, O'Halloran. Well, I can't say I agree with that. A two-to-one decision for O'Halloran. Uh, you only have to look at, study the, their faces. And O'Halloran is marked around the right eye, cut lip. Williams is unmarked. Boxing International, which took place at Coventry last night uh, once again. We saw a win for the Irish flyweight just now. Now it's the turn of the bantamweights. Jim Neely reporting. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and the national ABA champion at bantamweight by a majority decision, Howlett in the blue corner. Long-serving Keith Howlett, the reigning army and ABA bantamweight champion, went into the international against Ireland, more than satisfied with the way that his preparations for Auckland had been going. It's been hard. It's got to be hard to be justified, isn't it, really? So, I mean, it's going well at the moment. It's been worthwhile. Hopefully, I can produce it tonight, and I think it should go well. And uh, please with it. you'd be happy with a medal of a fairly high colour? Would I ever? Would I ever? Oh, 
Alex on the right for England. Lawler for Ireland. Howlett boxed in this match in Dublin last December and was outpointed by Roy Nash, who is boxing in this match tonight, but at one weight up at featherweight. And Lawler first boxed in this match in 1985 when he was outpointed by Mark Tierney. And then in 86, he was stopped in just over a minute and a half by John Lyon. And last year, he outpointed John Armour. Lawler, the Irishman, had two wins in the United States earlier this year when Ireland toured there. Howlett boxed in the recent England-Poland match at Portsmouth. He lost his match there to a southpaw, Robert Sieber. Lawler still forcing it. Actually, Howley quite likes to counter punch. Howlett told to keep his head up. Well, it's not clear yet which way this is likely to go. The pattern is emerging, of course, with Lawler, the attacker, and uh, Howlett, content to let him come to him, tries to... Uh, dodge the leads and then counter with his own punches. But if you're going to give the edge to anybody, I suppose you would have to give it to Lawler as the attacker. Small nosebleed. Second portion. You get a public warning if it happens again. Young Joe Lawler from the Darndale Club in Dublin put in a lot of work in that second round and uh, my bet is that he'll be ahead on the judges' cards. Boxed in the European Championships in Athens in May but he was stopped in his first contest there in one round by the Russian Arbachkov in 56 seconds. Just one right hand did it and then the Russian went on to take the gold medal. Seems as though Howlett for England on the right in white has got a bit to do here. He was told at the end of the first round by his coach that uh, he was allowing Lawler to take control and that's still true. But that's very much the style of Howlett's work. piece of work there by Howlett, he was making Lawler miss all the time and at the same time his own jab was scoring. Oh, he's on the point of being told to stop, he threw the right hand. Now that is controversial to say the least. The command stop was said twice I think and the right hand came 
certainly simultaneously, if not a fraction after the command, but nothing's been said about it. Now, whether Howlett had heard stop and had stopped and then got caught, I can't be sure, but it's certainly controversial. Fair and square. Two good punches, and Howlett now is in all sorts of trouble. But he must still have been pretty weak from that first controversial right hand. His nose is bleeding, and he's being led back to his corner in the third round, and Howlett is stopped. And Joe Lawler from Dublin gives Ireland a win in that bantamweight contest. saw for yourself and you heard for yourself there he first of all said break it up and then the two words stop stop came and on the second stop I think the right hand was thrown ladies and gentlemen the referee has stopped this contest in favor of the war for the blue corner the referee judged that RSCH which means that uh, you won't be allowed to be involved and certainly you won't be allowed to spar for, what, 28 days? How is that going to affect the Auckland preparations? I suppose I can do everything but spar as far as, I, as far as it goes. I don't know. I'll have to leave it to the council, see what they decide. But, I mean, I don't know how they're going to judge it. I feel I'm all right, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'll just have to wait and see, just like everybody else. But I'm just, I, like I say, I've got to pick myself up and see what happens. But I'm just really disappointed in myself, in my performance, I suppose. That's the way it goes. Scotland's Mike Deveney in the middle of this trio, a Great Britain representative at Bantamweight in Seoul last year, hasn't had an easy build-up, losing this month to East Germany and in October to the Welsh choice for Auckland, John Williams. So Deveney with a fair old point to prove tonight and a fair amount to do to convince the Scottish selectors that he's good enough to go to the Commonwealth Games in Auckland. And Williams really is a fireball. In 1980, and that's just why. What a good right hand, and Deveni looks anxiously at his corner. England's featherweight selection for Auckland, John Irwin, couldn't have wished for a better test of his mettle than the one he faced in Coventry in the international against the Irish. John Owen coming out of the right-hand corner, all in white for England, a man who's never been beaten in any of his England international matches, and facing here one of the most familiar figures in Irish boxing today, Roy Nash, South Four from Derry, who, believe it or not, is making his seventh appearance in this particular match. First box against England back in 1984, Roy Nash. Nash wearing the green singlet, South four. And moving up tonight to featherweight. He is in fact the reigning Irish and Ulster bantamweight champion. Well, Nash has every cause to celebrate, even before he knows the result of this, because uh, yesterday his wife gave birth to their second daughter, and he uh, stayed over to await the arrival of the young lady and he was the last Irish boxer to arrive here and he didn't get in until two or three hours ago at Roy Nash of Ireland congratulations to him and his wife and now he faces John Irwin from Genevieve near Doncaster Irwin of course one of England's selections for the Commonwealth Games. But Nash won't be going for Northern Ireland. Their featherweight's already been picked and it looks as though the unfortunate Nash has got a cut, which is rare with head guards. Usually they, uh, they tend to prevent cuts. And he's being led back to his corner. Now whether he wants the doctor's opinion or whether he's decided to stop it off his own bat, 
the referee, Ray Black. It looks as though he's decided the cut is too bad for Nash to continue, and that really is a crying shame because uh, everybody here was looking forward to that clash between Irwin and Nash, and it's all ended prematurely. Another Scotsman who's moved up a weight in the past year or so is Charlie Kane. At lightweight at last year's Olympic Games in Seoul, Kane, who's indicated now that he'll probably turn professional after Auckland, was considered one of Britain's most outstanding boxers and was reckoned to have been most unlucky not to have won at least a bronze medal. Most recently, the lanky six-footer, who looks as if he could finish up perhaps as a light middleweight, had a win against East Germany's Diego Drum, and he'll certainly be one of Scotland's brightest medal hopes in Auckland. So the final three minutes, Michael Carruth of Ireland, the soldier, on the left against Darren McCarrick from the Borshaw Club in Greater Manchester winner for the Young England squad against West Germany against Italy and against New York so he's got good junior form behind him McCarrick but uh, this is a different proposition altogether McCarrick went out to Warsaw last month with uh, an English squad to box in the Felix Stam multi-nation tournament. He was beaten there by Duda of Poland. And getting hustled all around this ring by this stocky, sharp punching southpaw, Caruth. More like Caruthless. gloves now painted with McCarrick's blood again he's cautioned about the shoulder he's trying to slip the, the lead but the shoulder's going in too low Carrick will have seen enough of uh, Carruth's right hand tonight to last him a very long time. And the referee is going to inspect the nose. Quite a bad nosebleed, but probably not serious damage. public a standing count uh, over McCarrick who didn't uh, agree with it he had a little laugh when the count started and the child has come in from the England corner because he's only going to take more punishment from this useful Irishman and his nose is damaged enough and so Ian Irwin the national coach slung the towel in he didn't want to see any more that's a sensible decision because he knew that uh, Darren McCarrick from Borshaw was going to take more and more punishment to the nose. Yes, the amateurs in particular need looking after in boxing, and we'll be back with it around about 4 o'clock this afternoon to pick that international up again, again, England against Ireland. Right now we have a Welsh flavour. Harry Carpenter and Jim Neely are looking on at the action. We start this time with a look at the lightweights. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and ABA national champion at featherweight by a unanimous decision, Richardson in the red corner. The youngest member of the English Commonwealth squad is Peter Richardson, a 19-year-old now boxing at lightweight and with a pretty impressive level of maturity. Peter Richardson, all in white for England, comes from Middlesbrough and his opponent here from Belfast, Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown, very tall figure. Inch or so advantage over Richardson, who's not short himself. Charlie Brown, 22 years old, and Richardson of England, only 19. 
last season's ABA featherweight champion, but now moved up to lightweight. So he's come up from nine stone to nine stone seven. Richardson, all in white. Charlie Brown, the reigning Ulster lightweight champion, runner-up in the Irish Championships to John Erskine. And Erskine, in fact, has been picked by Northern Ireland to go to Auckland. This is Richardson's uh, senior England debut in a two-nation match. Or rather, it's his second. He made his debut, I'm, I'm sorry, he made his debut against Poland a few weeks ago. But he was outpointed there by Jan Valeko on a majority decision. So he'll be looking for a win here to get that under his belt and take it into Auckland. Hitting and holding there, Brown, but he's got away with it. Hitting with the right hand, holding with the right hand, hitting with the left. Now he gets a caution for the head. Attack come, glided out of the way, and then counterpunched beautifully, particularly with the right. <laughs> Peter Richardson, 19 years old, from the Phil Thomas School of Boxing in Middlesbrough. He actually comes from Ormsby, the driver, and last season's ABA featherweight champion, and winner of a silver medal in the famous Canada Cup in Ottawa in June. Nice little move here by Richardson towards the end of the round. You'll see Charlie Brown attack, and a nice counter from Richardson. Good move. So Brown against Richardson, final round. Richardson, the man who will be representing England in Auckland. And uh, well ahead after two rounds. Seems to have a little bit too much firepower for Brown. And the nose has started bleeding badly again. He's going to have another look at that nose. He's calling for the doctor this time to examine it, and he is losing quite a lot of blood. that uh, the flow of blood can be stopped. And it's a question of just how serious the damage is up there inside the nose. And the doctor is satisfied that he can continue. 
but it must be very, very uncomfortable for him because it's an impossible point to breathe through his nose now. And he must be swallowing quite a lot of blood. But he's sticking with it, and for that you must give Charlie Brown full marks. Richards and perhaps a touch over eager. Again, a punch thrown on the break from Brown. Been a bit too much of that tonight. And it's been stopped. Richardson is the winner. And Brown, who really was beginning to take rather too many punches. And uh, it was an unhappy sight, the nose. And I feel quite relieved that they've called that off. I think it was absolutely the right decision. So Peter Richardson is the winner in the third round. And we'll be able to go to the Commonwealth Games in a few weeks' time with a win under his belt. In the former ABA champion, Dave Anderson, Scotland has another boxer with a wealth of international experience behind him. Anderson, who like Mick Deveni and Charlie Kane, wore a Great Britain vest in Seoul, tends to blow hot and cold. But for Scotland against East Germany two weeks ago, he was at his best to underline his Commonwealth medal potential. The welterweight contest for England on the left, all in white, Rob McCracken, actually the son of Irish parents, but tonight boxing for England against Ireland, his opponent here, Joe Lowe, from the Holy Trinity Club in Belfast. And McCracken's a tall man, six feet, one inch, and towering over the Irishman here. McCracken, 21, Lowe, 22. McCracken, actually, the boxing for England here, once boxed in the Irish Junior Championships. Nonetheless, he represents England and he's going to Auckland for the Commonwealth Games to represent England. A lot of reach advantage McCracken has here against Lowe, who is the Ulster and Irish champion, and Lowe himself will be in Auckland representing Northern Ireland. So these two could well meet again. 12,000 miles away. Kraken actually comes from Coleraine in Northern Ireland and oddly enough he lost to his opponent tonight Lowe in the final of the 1987 Irish Junior Championships. But now he boxes out of Birmingham, out of the Birmingham City Club and he's all England. only just at the end of the uh, travel of that left from low if we've been an inch closer to it it could have been real trouble it's not easy for low to get to McCracken he's so tall first round 
This is McCracken, who was runner-up in the ABA Championships at Wembley in May. And uh, he was outpointed in the final by Alan Hall of Darlington, who was winning his second championship and who has now turned professional. But that was at light welterweight. And now, of course, he's up to welter. two of this welterweight contest McCracken the Irishman who represents England all in white and low McCracken with all the physical advantages here six feet one inch he stands this island England match has gone England's way over the years England have won the last seven matches in fact the last time Ireland won in England was in 1971 in Croydon 18 years ago up, up. they won in Dublin Ireland in 77 but those are the only two victories they've had against England since 1971 both these men have broken noses signs of past attention right. from opponents McCracken just needs to do his footwork's alright but he needs to do a little bit more punching I think both men are very conscious indeed that uh, only a month or so away they'll have to be boxing in the Commonwealth Games and the last thing they want of course is injury and I think that is uh, playing a, a part in this contest they're not going to go mad the Kraken beginning to make the reach tell this chase by low at the moment Irish referee Eugene Duffy in uh, both the European and the World Championships this year but he failed to get past his opening contest in either tournament but he did have two wins in the United States last March in Atlantic City and in Orlando One round to go, and not too much in it. This is Joe Lowe from the Holy Trinity Club in Belfast, the younger brother of Brendan Lowe, who represented Northern Ireland in the Commonwealth Games in Edinburgh in 86. He boxed in this match, Joe, in uh, Dublin last year, outpointed then by Mark Elliott, the reigning ABA champion. of this welterweight contest the tall man the Irishman who boxes for England Rob McCracken from Birmingham City and uh, Joe Lowe from the Holy Trinity Club in Belfast McCracken boxed in this match last year in Dublin and he outpointed Sylvie Furlong of light welterweight and he won against Scotland earlier this year and he won a silver medal in October in Finland in the famous uh, Tama multi-nation tournament and then he won for England a few weeks ago in Portsmouth against Poland so uh, 
His form for England in these matches is very good indeed. He's, he's been in four of these two nation matches and he's won them all. Czechoslovakia, Ireland, Scotland and Poland. Comes from Kings Heath in Birmingham. Two brothers who box. Up, up. Head to low. And still a good deal of caution being displayed, perhaps not surprisingly, by these two men who are going with their respective countries to the Commonwealth Games. And the head guards completely unseated itself from uh, Lowe's head and uh, this happens so often with these things it really is very annoying the strap completely came undone Sony's going to have to look into the matter of head guards and try and design one that will stay put setting up a very big attack and McCracken for the first time looked a little disturbed referee wants him to break when he tells him to This is a close contest. Those had a reasonable last round. And McCracken has never made use of his height and reach in the final round. Well past the three minutes now, on our watch. Break. Stop. Stop. Obviously, there have been one or two interruptions like that by the referee, and time has clearly been taken off. But we are running at something like three and a half minutes now. Three forty-four. We made it when the bell came. Close contest between those two. Difficult to say who's won. McCracken had the better adjust in the first two rounds, but Lowe had a good last round, so it could be extremely close. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by a unanimous decision, McCracken from the red corner. And Rob McCracken. All three judges have voted for him, but I'd like to bet the scoring was pretty close. And it's not entirely uh, enjoyed by the crowd, the decision. But nonetheless, Rob McCracken is the winner for England in that, in that match between two Irishmen. Obviously, that's the result you want as far as Auckland's concerned. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, like, we enjoy every time we box. It's going to be close and awkward like that. So maybe we're better off avoiding each other in the common house, you know. I know Joe, you've been suffering from a little bit of flu before, but you'll probably be a bit disappointed about the way you box tonight. The best man won on the night, and that was Robert. Like he deserved to win. It was the sharpest and all was gone. But uh, like I say, that's one for him and one for me. And the next one will be in Auckland. Like and hopefully, uh, I'll have took a more out of tonight than he has. Woodhall, the Olympic medalist, comes from Telford in Shropshire. Boxes for the Salop Golden Gloves Club. Never won an ABA title. And 
tonight makes his first appearance against Ireland. And really, Woodhall has got to keep Wall sharp. Well, he could be in trouble here. He doesn't want to get into a war with him, but he's deep. That's the way it's going. Determination written all over Walsh. And Woodhall is taking too many punches. That's better, what a good attack by Woodall, and it's a standing count. Wall says no, I'm all right, but Ray Black, the referee from England, says yes, and gives him a compulsory eight. And that was the first really decent attack that Woodall set up, and when it came, it was blistering. Sequence of some four or five punches. And again, a good right from Woodall, and a good left. Well, I said he shouldn't get into a war with Walsh, but in fact, he's come out on top of it. Well, this is some battle between these two. here because he's kept his punches shorter and straighter. And a second standing count over Billy Walsh. There's the eight. And only a matter of seconds remaining in this round. was a different matter altogether for the Olympic bronze medalist Richie Woodhall who was beginning to pick up too many punches for my liking but suddenly decided to move into action and attack and uh, he put together a wonderful series of punches which we can see again now this is the first standing count right uppercut starts it then the left hook another right whole series of head punches which forced the referee to intervene and give him the eight count from another angle, same thing. This is what uh, they call in the trade combination punching, and it completely undid Walsh's defences. Pat, how important is it for team morale to have somebody uh, like an Olympic bronze medalist and Richie Woodall in the side itself? Oh, it's very important. All the lads, you know, we're all behind him, and he gives us inspiration. I mean, he's a, Richie's an old campaigner. He's what is known like an uh, old head on young shoulders, and he really inspires the lad and tonight he's a team captain and uh, we're willing him on the last three minutes then of this light middleweight contest Richie Woodhall the Olympic bronze medalist from Seoul all in white against the Irish champion Billy Walsh and Walsh has had two standing counts already Coventry Sports Centre now absolutely coming to their feet to cheer Woodhall on. Another good right for Woodhall. Well, he 
really has shown some extraordinary attacking power. He looked to be rather lost in the first half of the contest. But he's put all that behind him. Struggling to get back into this, determined to make something of it if he can. And a heavy fire again. Final round. Just over halfway through it. Richie Woodall, there weren't exactly too many prisoners been taken out there, were there? No, there wasn't. Uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's a strong, tough fellow, you know, Billy Wall. He's been around a long time. I knew it wasn't going to be easy because, uh, as you can see tonight, the full of grit the Irish always are. I mean, it was, you know, it was so much rivalry between the two countries. And he's a good boy, and I know I have to put it together tonight, you know. It would be fair to say that you're actually probably even stronger than you were in Seoul. Yeah, well, I think I am actually, you know. I think I'm, I've learned a lot from Seoul and I've gained in knowledge up here and in my body, you know, strength, so. Woodall's division in Seoul last year produced the worst of many bad decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is on point 3-2 in the blue corner. Oh no. 3-2, they've given it to Park and he doesn't deserve it by no standards does he deserve it to reanimation but there's a good deal of American anger about the place it was very sad to see so uh, security in the way it did uh, and see him the, the rise and the, the thing that took place after the decision but I feel that it was purely I think that these judges were bought into giving the decisions it wasn't bad judging it was very it was very planned judging I thought especially on behalf of the Korean boxing. But at the World Championships in Moscow, it was complete, a completely different scene with the scoring machine. And it was, it was a special system set out in the scoring uh, machine, which left the people to be bought, let's say. It, it ruled that out. And I think we got a, a far fairer um, decision overall at, at Moscow. But there's no scoring machine in, in, in uh, New Zealand. And I think the judging and refereeing standards of the African nations leaves a lot to be desired going on past Commonwealth Games and it'll be very interesting to see just how the decisions go there. What a year 1989 has been for Stephen Wilson of Scotland. A silver medal at the World Junior Championships was followed by a win against East Germany's Mike Olesch. Olesch, much more experienced. Wilson, adroit use of the forearm. And he looks so confident, Wilson, and the main composed. Once again, 
the East German corner has to keep quiet. Ole's covering up well when Wilson goes for the head and uh, Wilson might be better employed to think about switching it to the body because uh, those elbows of Ole are held fairly high. Left hand for the East German there. Well, they're both very strong, aren't they? Stop holding Wilson. from Oles. That's the second time. And don't do that again. Or there'll be a warning from Dick Rafferty. A little left from Wilson. And there again. But the punch is just coming really in singles. There hasn't been a decent combination from either boxer so far. <laughs> Wilson has ever worked hard inside. Good left hand from Mike Olish. And again. Is that left getting through again? And Wilson grimaces with frustration. No, we can't have that sort of carry on. And that certainly won't help Mike Olesh's cause. That's a warning for him, having had a couple of cautions from Dick Rafferty. And these two light heavyweights go to work again. Second round, right on the left. <laughs> right on the left. <laughs> uh, I think there's every chance this will go the full three rounds. They went three rounds last time, and I see no reason why it shouldn't do that again. And I would think we might well have a similar result to last time. With White coming out on top on points. Referee Black is having a close look at Curran, actually, after that uh, little attack from right. Right is punishing him around the body and the head. to the punch all the time now. Khan <laughs> going in with his head down. Right's left jab. 
doing useful work and the right hand thudding into the ribs and right is very much on top Curran doesn't really have a big punch, which is why Wright can walk through those attacks and put his own better attacks together. Two rounds completed and Wright ahead. Here's Curran, 28 years old from the CIE club in Dublin, works as a plasterer and reckons he's had something like 200 amateur contests. Final round, Monty Wright comes out against uh, the white-helmeted Dan Curran of Ireland, and Wright clearly ahead. And all set fair, it seems, for him to repeat last year's victory over Curran in this same match in Dublin. trying to stand his ground he very seldom wants to back up good honest workman Curran going for broke now Well, you have to hand it to Curran. He's got all the courage in the world, and uh, he's always trying to come forward. He's always trying to do something, and he's not always coming off best or better. And the snaking left jab of right flicks out again in the closing moments of this contest. Just over half a minute to go. Big right there, spun by Curran. It's a good job he doesn't hit too hard. Otherwise, Monty Wright would be in trouble now. Again, the thudding right hand of Curran comes over and catches right on the side of the jaw. You have to hand it to Curran. Full marks for determination and stickability. In fact, he's given right quite an uncomfortable closing minute. And once again, just as it did a year ago in Dublin, it's gone all the way. And Curran put in a real grandstand finish there against Wright and getting an appreciative round of applause here from this packed house at the Coventry Sports Centre. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by a unanimous decision, Wright! And Monty Wright repeats the win of last year, unanimous points decision against the popular, pleasant and always trying 
Dan Curran. The biggest member of the Northern Ireland team is Belfast Paul Douglas, though the reigning Irish champion had to miss out in Coventry. From Wales at Super Heavy, there's Kevin McCormick, who won the 1988 ABA Championship. And that's a title now held by the English Super Heavyweight representative, who'll be going to Auckland. He's Pat Pasley from London, and he produced a competent, if somewhat unspectacular display in Coventry to beat the Irishman George Douglas. A victory which levelled the international match at six contests all. However, it was an overall conclusion that was far from ideal from an English point of view. Uh, it wasn't quite the result that I was looking for. You, you're right in what you say. But we had one or two faces missing that might have made all the difference in the match. And... Uh, that's taking nothing away from the Irish. A lot of people would have said that, that you might be risking quite a bit, taking on what was always going to be a fairly formidable task, this close to the Commonwealth Games. How do you react to that? Hmm. Yes, it was something that I inherited when I took on the job as national coach, and uh, something I had to go along with. Arrangements had been made, and uh, maybe some needed the competition, and so it's, a, it's always a chance you take. But overall, you're reasonably pleased that, that, that the build-up has gone according to plan. Uh, no, I'm not happy at this stage. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, and, uh, but we have a short while to do it. So we'll be back after the new year, back in training camp, and uh, picking the lads up for the Commonwealth. But still as hopeful as ever that there'll be a fairly good haul of medals.